go and have a quick gander at the wavetable. So just make go the init. So here we got your init with your basic saw. And here you have your different frames. And you get up to 256 of these guys. And what you need to know is that each one of these is the exact same length in terms of sample size. So that'll make that'll be important. Um, this is your FFT. We're not going to get into that. We're just going to get into <clears throat> basically resampling raw raw cuts from other synths, and we'll, we'll try a few examples other stuff too um, yeah I mean uh, there's a lot of stuff to get in here but uh, we're just gonna take a look at this just, just, just for now we'll leave it like that okay so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take a sound that okay so Super sweet patch. <clears throat> I've used it in quite a few tracks. Um, so yeah, basically what we want to do is capture this wave. We want to steal the wave from this synth and put it into Serum. And uh, yeah, it's going to give uh, a new dimension to Serum that you just can't really get from Serum itself. But uh, yeah, sounds really good. So the first thing you got to know is that you definitely don't want to resample stuff with a lot of delay, a lot of reverb. Doesn't really work out too well, generally. <clears throat> All that messy stereo information, overlapping, phasing. Doesn't really good. Um, generally, one nice, clean, solid wave. And also, I generally try to avoid like uh, distort, like distort, unless I, I want it to be like uh, part of the texture of the sound. We'll just disable all this. Also, you want the full the full range. You want to don't want to cut. You want to keep that low end, so it's nice and warm. Otherwise, it'll come out too harsh. Disable everything. Take off the delay. Still got uh, that velocity on there, but uh, that doesn't matter. <clears throat> so remember, you get up to 256 frames. Now you're gonna you'll find out yourself that you probably want it like I don't know, no more than two bars long. It'll probably be I don't know 100 frames, 100 200 frames. Doesn't really matter. You can use as many as you feel like it, just not more than 256. Um. So what we want to do is we want to create a sweep, a simple sweep to capture a range of tones in one sitting here. So So that's basically what I have decided that I wanted to to do. So what I'll do is I'll 
start this here. Hit that again. And then I'll go. Something like that. And then I'll zoom in. Here I'll go to the redraw. Nice. I generally like to resample it in the like the low C. I find it gives me the best result. So I bounce that down just like that. And usually what I'll do is I will normalize it like this. File, convert to new audio file. Tables raw. Um, it's in my folder. I already made it in the last ver version because I'm re-recording this. So Tables cut, tables raw, tables raw. So we'll call this massive Rezo Beast 2. Save. Now I can open up a new serum. Now there's there's two ways to, that I do this basically. Um, the first way is I will you can just drop the file right in, but you need to know what key it is because that's gonna that's gonna determine how many samples per table per frame that there's going to be and that's going to um, it's going to like uh, determine like the, the the pitch basically and you're going to if you want to like an accurate representation of the wave table you put in the pitch and it's going to create that properly for you so, I just want to see something. Okay. Okay. So, what you do here is so we go C0. You type that in and hit enter. And it's going to split each one at precisely 1348 samples. Now we can drag this in right here, and it's going to correctly, based on the fact that it's in the key of C, C0 precisely, it's going to give us this. Whoopa. That's pretty damn good me um 
Now, uh, maybe it's hard to tell on the speakers, but at least in the headphones I can hear that there's like a subtle little clicking. Now that's caused from, you see these, uh, these edges, many of them they end not at the zero crossing, they're, they're, they're ending mid-wave. So basically, because it's looping, what's happening is the wave is being interrupted and it's starting at a new point, so it's causing a click. So what I do, I find, for me anyways, this gives me the best result. I'll use this um, grid and I'll make it really tight. You see it's this little matrix here. And then you can use a process, X fade to grid size. And the reason why I use that is because I find it's like the tightest fade. And see, it just pops that up just like that with very, very minimally, because we don't want it, we don't want to like fade it too hard because then it's going to um, soften up the waveform too much. Like a fade in, you know, like you know, like make a pad and fade it in like that. So, I mean, even though it's it's not quite like that, but it's, it's you want it as subtle as possible to preserve the integrity of the wave. Um, but you don't want the click. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, so arpeggio, we can just test this out. Velocity. You know, this is the the thing everyone does. I mean, it sounds good generally. And just take a pattern, note length, random, random. <laughs> Sounds very nice. Okay, so then from there, then from there, what we do is we will save our wave. Export 32, all as one. I already made this folder, Future Media Blast. Massive Rezo Beast 2. There we go. Done. <laughs> 